This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the interior of St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg, Russia, a magnificent cathedral which served as the central cathedral for the Russian Empire for nearly half a century. And behind me is the central altar of this cathedral. And you can see the marvelous lapis, the malachite. And by the way, the malachite is a mosaic. Malachite does not come in big pieces. The artist took little pieces and put them together to form grains so that it looks like solid pieces of malachite. But actually there are 16 tons of malachite used in the decorations of this altar and 1,100 pounds of deep blue lapis, which was brought all the way from Afghanistan. In this th cathedral, there are 62 mosaics, 155 paintings, more than 300,000 tons of materials, 20 different kinds of precious marbles from all over the world. It is simply remarkable. But as beautiful as it is, it pales in comparison to what God did inside me and what God did inside you when we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that he made us to be new creatures. That word new is really important. It means when we got saved, he didn't fix us. He didn't improve us. He didn't repair us. No, no, no. We're not just a better version of who we used to be. We're brand new. We're not who we used to be at all. God put forth his full power to marvelously create us. We are God's masterpiece. I'm a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece. Each of us are uniquely made by the power of God. Again, not a fixed version of who we used to be, not improved, not corrected, not enhanced, we are brand new creatures in Christ. Wow. That is what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Thank you for joining me for today's program. My name is Rick Renner. And as I told you in the introduction today, I'm going to be teaching you about you being the temple of the Holy Spirit. My friend, you are the habitation of God by His Spirit. That is what the Bible teaches. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, or I like to say, you are a walking sanctuary. This teaching is so rich, and I want you to really grab it and understand it. And that's why I want you to order the whole series, which is called, You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats. And we really walk through all the New Testament scriptures about what a miraculous work God did inside you when you got saved. In fact, what God did in you and what God did in me was so marvelous. God said, you know what? That's so good. I want to live in there. And he moved inside us and we became the temple of the Holy Spirit. Friend, that's a miracle. What a miracle. And you need to really understand it. So please order the whole series. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Ten parts, and it comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a study guide. I think you know that I really like these study guides. We put a lot of work into these study guides because we believe that when you see it or hear it and read it, it really reinforces what you're learning. So order yours today. And remember that we're also offering you right now my book, which is called A Life Ablaze, 10 Simple Keys to Living on Fire for God. So many people begin with a fire of the Holy Ghost. They just blaze for the Lord and then they get busy in life and then they kind of lose it along the way. That's not God's will for your life. God wants you to begin on fire, to stay on fire, and to end on fire. You can be an inferno for Jesus to the end of your life. And if your heart is crying out to be lit on fire again by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is the book you need 
because this book covers the 10 different fuels you need to be injecting into your spiritual flame to make sure you keep burning for Jesus. You can be a life ablaze. Please order your copy today. Just go to renner.org. You can order all of this right now and look around our website. You'll be amazed at how many resources are there for you to take advantage of. And for those who become partners, we always send you a package of books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. Sometimes people say, well, what is a partner? A partner is someone, of course, who prays for us, but who also financially contributes regularly to our ministry to help us take teaching people can trust to them and to others all over the world. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and that's our job. Our job is to bring teaching that people can trust to them and to others all over the world. The lips of the righteous feed many. And when you become a partner, you help us take this teaching to people all over the world. And without ever leaving your house, by simply calling or going online, you can become a partner. And with a gift every month, you can change somebody else's life. That is so powerful. And when you become a partner, we'll immediately send you Denise's book called The Gift of Forgiveness and my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to our partners. This is our way of saying welcome to our partner family. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today I want you to open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And today I'm going to talk to you about the power of God that created you all over again and made you to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. It took real power for God to do this work inside you. We've already seen in the two previous programs, you were quite a mess when the grace of God found you. But you were God's special project and He turned you into a masterpiece. And today we're going to see what He turned you into. So I want you to open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and we're going to begin in verse 19. Paul is speaking to the Corinthians and he says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? But notice how he begins in this verse. In the King James Version, it begins with the word what. In Greek, it is an exclamation. What? Have you not gotten it yet? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And when Paul uses the word know, it is a form of the Greek word oida, which means to comprehend or to perceive. The word not is the emphatic form of the word no. Do you not comprehend? Have you not gotten it yet? Do you not understand? What is this? How could you possibly not understand that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? The word body is the Greek word soma. It is the word for the physical body. And Paul now says to the Corinthians, and he says to me and to you, do you get it? Do you understand? Have you comprehended yet that your physical body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? This word temple is the Greek word naos. I'm going to read to you directly from my notes. The word naos is the Greek word for a temple or a highly decorated shrine. Any Greek reader would have understood that because Greek cities had a lot of temples and they were very highly decorated shrine. They all knew what a temple was or a naos. It is the image of vaulted ceilings, marble, granite, gold, silver, highly decorated ornamentation. And it is the same word used in the Old Testament Septuagint to describe the most sacred innermost part of a temple like the Holy of Holies. And now that is the word that Paul uses to describe what God has fashioned inside me and what God has fashioned inside you. If you remember, we began as people that were spiritually dead, but God, by His grace, aroused us. He quickened us together with Christ. He chose us, put His Spirit into us, turned us into a masterpiece, and created inside us a temple, a dwelling place so magnificent that God said, I'm going to live there. I'm going to move inside them. And our physical body literally is a naos. It's a shrine. It's the dwelling place. The Holy of Holies is right here. 
God lives inside me and God lives inside you. If your eyes could be opened to see what is inside you, my friend, you would be flabbergasted. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And in fact, Paul goes on in verse 19 and says, which is in you. The word in literally means in you right here, right here. You know, when I was a boy, we used to design treasure maps and we would play like we were pirates looking for a treasure. And of course, on our maps, we always put a big X and the X is where you dug for buried treasure. Well, in our case, X marks the spot and X is right here, right here, right inside here is treasure. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which we have in us. That is what Paul says. Then he continues to say, which you have of God and you are not your own, which you have is a form of the Greek word echo, which means to hold, to have, to possess. And Paul here describes us like divine containers. That's what our human body has become once we're placed in Christ and we're made brand spanking new. We became a container. Our body is literally the dwelling place. It is the temple. It is the Holy of Holies. And God, by His Spirit, has moved inside me, and he has moved inside you. Say amen. But hey, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You are new, brand spanking new. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But... A powerful verse to describe what God did in us is John 1, verse 12, and I want you to see it with me. So turn in your Bible to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12, a verse that you have probably heard many times. But listen to what it says. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And notice how the verse begins. It says, but as many. In Greek it says, as many as, as great as, as much as. And it describes an unlimited number, which means God has thrown open the door to anyone who will believe. The door is wide open. God is beckoning everyone into his family. And to as many as received him. What does that mean, received? Well, it is a form of the Greek word lambano, which means to seize or to lay hold of something in order to make it your very own, almost like a person who reaches out to grab hold of something, to capture it, or to take possession of something. In some cases, this word lambano, which here is translated as the word received, it means to violently lay hold of something in order to seize it and to take it as your very own. At other times, it means to graciously receive something that has been freely and easily given. And all of this is important in this context because God offers us the gift of salvation, but we have to take it. We have to seize it. By faith, we have to receive it. God freely, easily gives it, but it has to be received. And now this verse says, as many as received him, Jesus just wants to be received. As many as received him and to all who will take him. That's really what it means. To them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And when the Bible says to them gave, the word gave is a form of the Greek word didomi, which means to give, to bestow as a gift, to give to the one that is asking to supply, to amply furnish, to give into one's care, to entrust, to commit. He commits to us. He furnishes to us amply. He supplies to us the power we need to become the sons of God. Do you know why he gives us the power to become the sons of God? Because on our own, we don't have the ability to become a son of God. This requires a miraculous work. This is what we have seen in the two previous programs. We saw in the first program, we were spiritually dead. We could not save ourselves. We saw in the second program that salvation is the gift of God. God initiates it. God performs it. God finishes it. We are a masterpiece because of the riches of God's grace. And now in this verse, 
we find the only way we can become a child of God is because God himself supplies amply to us the power we need to become a son of God. It takes power to become a son of God. The word power is a form of the Greek word exousia, which means delegated authority. God delegates to us the power which causes us to become a son of God. And the word become is a form of the Greek word genomai, which means to suddenly become, which means in one moment, one moment, you become a child of God. The moment you receive him, he gives you the power, the ability to immediately become a son of God. This word become, the Greek word genomai, also means to transition from one thing to another. You transition from being spiritually dead to instantly becoming spiritually alive. My friend, your salvation really is a miracle. But wait, the verse goes on to say, He gave them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. The word believe is the Greek word pisteo, which means to persuade, to trust, to believe. But listen to this. It describes a persuasion from God that imparts to an individual the divine impulse or divine spark to believe. God even gives you the ability to believe. If God did not give you the ability to believe, you would not be able to believe. God even gives the ability to believe to you. Do you see what a work of grace is your salvation? But it says, even to them that believe on his name. The word on in Greek is the word ice, which really is the word into. It carries the idea of a merger. It's you entering into union with the name of Jesus himself. The word name here, the Greek word onoma, which does in fact mean name, but it denotes a person's character, his reputation. And here we find that when you release your faith, you enter into union with the very character of Jesus himself. You and Jesus become one. A merger takes place. That really is what this means. Oh, salvation is such a miracle, and you could never be saved on your own. God has got to grace you. He nudges you by his spirit. We know that from Ephesians chapter 5. And verse 14, which says we are spiritually dead, but God by his spirit shines on us. He nudges us. He arouses us from our spiritual death. The Holy Spirit draws us. God gives us the faith to believe. Do you see why the Bible says that our salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast? But wait, when you come to John 1, 13, it goes on to say, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We are born of God. I'm born of God. My friend, you are born of God. You should just say, I am born of God. This verse says God gave to you the power, exousia, the authority, the delegated right to become a son of God. At the very moment you received him by faith, he imparted to you the ability which caused you to instantly become, transitioning from what you used to be instantly into a son of God. That is what the Bible teaches in this verse. Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, listen to what Paul writes. Listen to this. He's writing about unbelievers, and this is how he describes them. And of course, there was a time when this described you. Not anymore, but this was you before. It describes others that you know that have not yet come to Christ. And listen to what Paul says. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them." This verse tells us what a miracle salvation is. Because the word blinded, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, the word blinded 
does not just depict one that is blind. Listen to this. It depicts a person who is unable to see because he has been blinded by someone. His eyes have been removed so that he doesn't even have eyes to see. He doesn't even have eyes to see, which explains why you can share the gospel with an unsaved person and it just seems they can't see what you're saying. They don't have eyes to see. The Holy Spirit himself has to give that person eyes to see because Satan has blinded them. He's removed their eyes. They are spiritually dead. They don't have the ability to see. The Holy Spirit gives them eyes to see. And you know when he gives them those eyes? When the gospel is spoken to them. Miraculously, the Holy Spirit begins to create eyes in the minds of unbelievers for them to hear, for them to see, for them to understand. But if they never hear, they'll never have eyes to see and to understand. That's why you need to share the gospel. The sharing of the gospel, the sharing of the light of the gospel of Christ is what creates eyes in the minds of unbelievers so they can see and so they can believe. Do you see what a miracle salvation it is and what a great level of power is required for a person to become a child of God? And once you become a child of God, 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You become a walking sanctuary. God gives you eyes to see, to understand. God gives you the faith to believe. God graces you with the riches of His grace, His benevolence, enabling you to believe. He quickens you together with Christ, gives you new life, and then creates inside you a place so magnificent that He moves inside and you become the temple of the Holy Ghost. All of that happened the day that you got saved, my friends. Your salvation really is a miracle that required great, great power. We're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. Do you really know what the Bible means when it says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? My friend, you really are the dwelling place for the Spirit of God, and that is amazing and powerful. In this fabulous 10-part series, You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit, Rick Renner unwraps all the intricacies of what the Bible means when it declares that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God put forth His best work when you were born again, and then God placed His greatest treasure deep inside you. In this series, you'll learn you are God's masterpiece. You are a repository of God's greatest treasure. You are sealed and guaranteed by God's Spirit. You are filled with the riches of Christ. This life-transforming 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. In addition to this teaching series, you can also purchase the book, A Life Ablaze. In this book, Rick lays out everything you need to live an intimate, uncompromising life and stay on fire with the Holy Spirit's power for years to come. You can do it, but you need to know how, and that is what you'll discover in this timely book. Order your copy today because it will help you throw the right fuels into your fire to get you burning again. Order your copy of A Life Ablaze today for just $22. Don't miss this special offer. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the book A Life Ablaze. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing in one of the long corridors in the Tulsa headquarters building. And these corridors are lined with photography of our past ministry. For example, here, it's amazing. You see a picture of me and Denise first starting our ministry as we're traveling in the car with Paul and Philip on her lap and there's little Joel. But then you look over here and you see our Russian ministry. Here's Golden Stars with some of the Russian movie stars who came to help us. At that event, we had more than 16,000 senior citizens show up. That is amazing. Then you see the youth ministry and us working with members of the government. And here you see again me and Denise 
in our first little church we started in Arkansas many, many, many years ago. And then you look over here and you see us filming TV programs. I mean, there's just so much. And when you walk through these hallways and look at all these pictures, you're just surrounded with what God has done throughout our ministry. And it is amazing. And now, every day in this facility, ministry is taking place. Oh, I wish you could hear the phone calls. And when our team begins to pray, it is like a roar of prayer that you can hear when you walk through our partner care ministry or the letters that are going out or the resources and resources are books and USBs and all kinds of video and audio. And it's going to the ends of the earth. And we're able to do all of that because we have a facility where we can do it. And paying off this facility is our current goal. You know, when we started the ministry expansion project, it was quite large, but we've already paid off half of it. That's amazing. And you helped us to do that. And I want to say thank you. Please help us continue until we finish it. And if you're not a part of the team yet, please pray about becoming a part of our ministry expansion project giving team so we can pay off all of this and then liberate all that money to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And that's our desire. So I want to say thank you in advance for helping us. My friend, I've had such a good time today sharing with you from John chapter 1 and verse 12. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see that when you got saved, what God did inside you was so magnificent that God sealed you with His seal of approval. You're going to want to give God a round of applause when you hear tomorrow's program. But hey, I want you to order the whole series, which is called, You Are the Temple of the Holy Spirit. My friend, you are. You're not who you used to be. you become something new. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God has moved in you, and you need to know what that really means. And you need to understand what work God did to turn you into a walking sanctuary. So please order your series today. And it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which is called A Life Ablaze. The back of the book says you can keep your fire burning and you can. You just need to know how. And that's why I want you to have this book. And I want to say thank you to each of you that are partners with our ministry. And if you're not a partner, please pray about becoming a partner with our ministry today. You can do that by going online or calling right now. And remember that if you need prayer, we're here for you and we want to pray for you. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you gave us the power to become the sons of God. Help us to embrace it and to enjoy it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But until then... Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for joining Rick Renner today. For more information about Rick Renner Ministries and product resources, visit renner.org. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.